which database is consuming maximum CPU time. Now, if you look at the question, this question itself seems to be technically incorrect because database as an object inside SQL Server does not really consume CPU time or CPU cycles. It's actually the workloads that consume CPU cycles. So what does this really mean? When you are troubleshooting query performance, it always uh, helps to know that out of multiple databases that you have in your environment or multiple databases that are hosted in a particular instance, you may want to drill down on specific user database or application database under which you have very CPU intensive workloads or queries that are running. So I'm going to show you a query, a workload. I will construct it with, along with you, which will help you drill down as to which databases are consuming maximum CPU cycles, or rather the workloads that are running inside that database consume maximum CPU cycles. And that will uh, help you drill down into uh, in, in, in terms of your baselining, in terms of uh, finding out uh, the uh, rogue workloads, uh, drilling down to databases or applications. And I am going to show you uh, how to construct the query, which will give you output that is similar to this. Uh, and it's a very simple output. As you can see, you have the database name on uh, one side in one of the columns and you have the average CPU cost in another column. So when you have this kind of output, it makes sense to kind of narrow down your uh, performance uh, tuning uh, efforts to certain databases uh, that are contributing maximum to CPU cycles. Action time, let's jump to demo. Let's get uh, started. This is the kind of output you want. Uh, you have DB name and uh, CPU time, the two columns and this is exactly what I showed you on the slide. To begin uh, with, first we let's uh, list down the DMVs that we are going to use. So of course, uh, one of the most popular DMVs uh, that helps in uh, query tuning and troubleshooting query performance is DIM exec query stats. And uh, if you know about this DMV, this uh, DMV has a lot of information, a lot of metrics that that you can use to troubleshoot query performance. And uh, I, I, if I am not wrong, this is one of those DMVs that I've used more often than any other DMV. And uh, this has a lot of columns, as you can see. Uh, each record here represents a, a workload, a query. Um, and uh, you have uh, columns like uh, a statement start offset, end offset, et cetera, et cetera. But for us, uh, the important one here is plan handle. And I will tell you why I'm going to use plan handle. So you can see two handles there. Uh, one is the SQL handle. This is the signature uh, of the query, the SQL handle. And plan handle represents the signature of the plan itself, the execution plan. And when it comes to CPU cost, which uh, in other words, the worker time, so you have total worker time, last worker time, et cetera, et cetera, but we will focus on total worker time, which means this particular query, for example, uh, just for the sake of discussion has taken, uh, this is the total CPU cycle, the total worker time. But what you also need to focus on the execution count, it's uh, this particular query has been executed 22,000 times approximately, uh, rather 23,000 times. So we need to find out the average worker time and that's going to be a simple arithmetic. Uh, you have total worker time divided by the execution count. So for the time being, uh, for the output that we want, we only need to play around with the uh, with the execution count and total worker time. And we are also going to take plan handle. So that's the DMV. This is the DMV we are going to use. Now let's go back to the editor. And why do we need plan handle? Well, there is a DMV called uh, sys uh, DM uh, exec um, plan attributes. Now, to make to be technically correct, this is actually not a DMV. It is a DMF dynamic management function because uh, this cannot just run on its own. It needs a parameter. And as you can see, every execution plan has certain attributes. And if you want to e extract information, uh, 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 the values that are stored in those attributes, you need to uh, specify the plan handle. And the plan handle is going to come from this DMV. So 
this is going to uh, so let's say let's call this as uh, as an ally select star from query stats let's call it as um, qs and then i will say um, qs dot let's say plan handle uh, intellisense is not working because i have not even joined them so i'm going to join them and i'm going to use a t sql construct called cross apply cross apply is uh, very similar to um, let's say a join where uh, every um, this the output of this is going to be applied to every record from the outer query so th that's really like applying here would mean and now if i say qs dot and you can see the intelligence coming up now uh, i'm going to take qs dot plan handle let's uh, put an alias to this one as well and i will call this as pa uh, for plan attributes now uh, what do you really want let's go and look at all the columns there so we have uh, qs dot star and then i'm going to get pa dot uh, so you can see the three columns there attribute is cache key and value so let's put pa dot star and let's just run this now to see the output so uh, the first few set of columns are coming from the from the first dmv which is query stats i already talked about this let's scroll down all the way to the end for three columns that are now coming from the plan attributes dmf and you can see the values for each of these attributes here and we are going to focus on db id there's no database name there so we can use the db name function to convert uh, to get the corresponding database name for a specific database id now you can see that for each query there you know this is going is, is being repeated so you have bunch of these attributes uh, for each plan and that's why you see 54000 rows here because um, uh, it's like a cross join basically where every attribute record is being multiplied with every uh, single record from query stats so let's try to form the query now um, what you want to do is cross apply and then you can say select and what do you want you basically want uh, value uh, let's call this as um, as database um, name this is what you want Oh, value as this is not database name this is going to be database id let's say um, select values database id from sysdm exec plan handle pa and you are going to say where attribute because there are so many attributes there we want to be very specific to the attribute which says db id so let me just show you the result once more and scroll down to the end this is the attribute we want to take db id so we're going to filter on that uh, which and the attribute says db id attribute db id and uh, let's put this as an alias and we can remove this from here and let's go and execute this and now you can see uh, we are only fetching the db id attribute and i have i have of course ignored all others with that filter so now i'm getting the database id and now you can see what we are trying to achieve we don't need all these columns we just need the two columns so i'm going to fetch the database name so in in summary for each database id uh, what is my um, total cost in terms of query here so what i can do is i need uh, let's say I can specify um, pa dot um, pa dot pa dot uh, data base id and um, this is one of the columns and then I want let's say quiz dot total worker time now you definitely uh, want the average so we can say total worker um, time uh, by qs dot execution count as let's call it as a average cpu cost and you don't need all of this anymore these are the two things so we need the database id and the count from um, this dmv cross apply let's go and execute this okay cool 
this is what you want but of course you want the a couple of things you want the database name and you also now so many of these uh, database ids are obviously being repeated and our objective is to find out the uh, average cpu cost with respect to each database and we want unique list here so you really want to sum this up so let us sum this up and you can use the sum function here uh, as average CPU cost that's one of the things you want to do and you want the database name so we'll say db underscore name there and let's get this as um, db name okay oh my god everything seems to be a function there database uh, name that's fine okay let's put uh, some square um, brackets around this database name now PA and uh, now we need to do um, group by so PA let's say group by and we can take um, group by uh, database ID and we can say order by because you want uh, in descending order um, that's what you can focus on so we can actually take uh, order by average CPU cost descending let's go and execute and see this this allowed implicit conversion from data type to SQL variant use the convert function okay so what does this really mean uh, this uh, this is because uh, the the value there which we are actually trying to um, filter on um, here um, database ID column is actually SQL variant so we got to convert this so I will use the convert function and convert this to integer um, and I think that should be fine let's go and execute this there you go so this is the uh, output that you were looking for and now uh, the whole idea is when you have uh, multiple uh, databases in your uh, instance you can uh, narrow down your uh, focus on some of these uh, top databases where you have pretty CPU intensive workloads running so just helps you to narrow down in your performance tuning efforts back to the query here um, um, I just constructed it in front of you and this is how you make more uh, meaning out of so many dynamic management views and functions out there um, a few catch uh, here though uh, you know this is heavily dependent on uh, the execution plan attributes and the data that's there in query stats so uh, if let's say you have plans that have got kicked out uh, of the plan cache uh, due to whatever reasons then uh, this output may not be really true to itself uh, so baselining is very important and i focus a lot on baselining you can see one of my top databases here is baseline uh, database so what i uh, uh, to repeat myself once once more i'm depending on the plan handles uh, that i get from query stats and those plans have to exist in the in the plan cache and uh, those plan handles or uh, rather the plans if they get kicked out of the plan cache and let's say some of those very expensive uh, cpu intensive plans are are not there in the plan cache then this output may not be technically correct so you want to keep that in uh, mind so here is the summary of the query you are retrieving um, um, one record each from query stats you're summing up uh, the average cpu cost and you're grouping up the uh, grouping up by database name you get the database id from plan attributes and <clears throat> you are doing mathematics where attribute id is uh, db id because that's the attribute you want to focus on and you execute that's the result set for you back to the slides hope the demo was worth your time well then thank you very much for your time for uh, watching this video i hope to meet you again soon in another video